Hello guys and gals and welcome. So today we're going to be looking at a giant skull, like the biggest of skulls. No, really, it's actually called the giant skull. You guys thought I was joking, didn't you? Ah, you did think I was joking. No, we're going to be taking a look at the giant skull in D2. Now, the giant skull is one of those odd items that doesn't really quite seem like it has a good use, but then and the more you look at it, the more you think about it, it kind of does. Um, it has some interesting mechanics on it, and uh, we're going to go over those together. We're going to talk about them. So right off the bat, you'll see that it has relatively high defense. It's got 444 defense, which is pretty massive. And, um, and it actually gets higher than this, so it can be as high as 477 defense at its highest, and as low as 350 at its, uh, at its lowest. And um, the, um, the defense on it, as well as the defense bonus, both vary, so it does, uh, it does vary by quite a bit. Uh, we have a relatively low strength requirement on this of 106, which I think is, is pretty sweet. And a level requirement of 65, which is also relatively low. Um, and this is going to come in handy later as we, uh, as we explore this item. Um, so we have a 10% chance of crushing blow on this. And, uh, and this is actually really amazing because if used in concert with things like, for instance, Honsudan Yari, which has a 45% crushing blow already, uh, or Duress, which has crushing blow and open wounds, um, and various things like that, you can stack up the crushing blow on your mercenary to a really, really high amount, which is pretty sweet. Um, it also has knockback on it, which means that it can be actually extremely useful on a Amazon, uh, on a uh, bow Amazon, like a rogue mercenary, and the rogue mercenaries are getting buffed up in uh, the coming patch, so it might not be a bad choice. Uh, the 35 to strength on it also makes it a really nice choice to uh, put on a mercenary, just so that your mercenary has better strength, so that they can put on something like, for instance, say, uh, inside pole arm, or, uh, or something of that nature. And whether or not you find this particular item, you know, isn't specifically up to you. You know, you might be running along and you might hope for an Andariel's Visage, but this is what you end up with, and it's not exactly a bad item. <laughs> now, the strength does vary from 25 to 35, and the defense does vary from 250 to 320. So pretty massive uh, variance there on the defense from 350 to 477, basically total. Um, and then we have the um, the strength also varies 25 to 35. So it's nice to find one of these that has 35 strength. Uh, we also get two sockets on this bad boy, and two sockets really makes or breaks this item. Because in my opinion, I wouldn't want to invest a bunch of jewels or gems in this if I could only do one. And, uh, and it does vary between one to two sockets. Um, now, if you do happen to find one of these with two sockets and, uh, and maybe 35 strength, it's actually going to be a pretty amazing item for a lot of characters. Um, it's not maybe the best item, but it's actually an extremely strong item for mercenaries. And, um, and the reason is, is because you can put gems in it, obviously. You can put jewels, you can put runes, you can put all sorts of stuff in here to make it better. Like, for instance, if I was an Amazon, I could totally use this um, on a physical damage Amazon to get crushing blow and knockback. Then I wouldn't have to worry about knockback on my bow or gloves or anything. Uh, I could then put in two 1540 jewels in here, or I could put in um, two lightning facets or cold facets or whatever. Whatever kind of damage I specifically need. Like on a Jamazon, you could do two lightning facets. On a uh, bow freezing Amazon, you could do co two cold facets. On a fire Amazon, you could do two uh, fire facets. Um, you could also, like I said, go with two 15% IAS jewels. Now, granted, not everybody has 1540s laying around. 15% IAS, 40% enhanced damage jewels are not growing on trees. So you could just put two 15% IAS jewels in here and rock 30% IAS with the knockback and the crushing blow and the bonus to strength, which is not terrible. Um, all in all, I feel like the Giant Skull Bone Visage is one of those very interesting helmets which can fit quite nicely in a build for a mercenary. Um, I don't think it is specifically the like best in slot for a lot of mercenaries, but if I were going to build a, um, a bow girl, um, I would want her to have knockback. And um, it's a little bit difficult to get knockback on a bow girl, specifically if you're building her around like a, an item. Like say, for instance, I was building her around 
a um, an insight pole arm, which which believe it or not, they actually made it so that insight is made makeable in bows now. So I can make an insight in a bow. I could put it on her. I wouldn't have knockback on the bow, and I probably wouldn't be able to get knockback on the armor. But I could put a giant skull bone visage on her with knockback on the helmet. Maybe uh, tack her up with uh, with something defensive to keep her alive. Maybe two shale runes for 40% fast rate recovery, or maybe I'll throw two 15% IAS jewels in there to make her attack faster, or um. You know, I could also go with uh, with some jewels that have maybe like all resistances on them and something else. Um, I could even uh, throw in uh, maybe some burr runes for uh, a massive amount of uh, physical damage reduction. Uh, that'd be kind of expensive, though, wouldn't it? Um, you know, there are a lot of different choices that you can go with for something like this, and uh, and that's kind of really what this revolves around. Is it gives you it gives you some nice things. So it gives you crushing blow, it gives you knockback, and it gives you a nice bonus to strength. And then you use the sockets to kind of build around it. Now we also have the uh, ethereal version here, and the ethereal version has 560 defense on it. Um, and I do believe the ethereal version can get a little bit higher on the defense than that. Uh, that's actually not cap, but it's uh, still better than the uh, the bone visage. Now we also have a 96 strength on this because it does go down by 10 for being ethereal and, uh, and I think it's important to note that uh, Act 1 rogue mercenaries have ridiculously low strength and uh, and if you're trying to put anything on them which has a high strength value requirement you're probably going to need something like this to uh, to make it work out and and I, I feel like with the upcoming changes to the Act 1 rogue mercenary and uh, and how good this particular item is for a bow character, I feel like this is, might be one of the best in slot items for a bow character. Um, if I was running a exploding arrow rogue mercenary or an exploding arrow or a uh, freezing arrow uh, rogue mercenary, uh, this could quite possibly be the best in slot item for them. Uh, specifically because it has chance of crushing blow and knockback. Now granted crushing blow is uh, reduced in effectiveness on ranged abilities. So on on physical damage, on, on uh, melee damage, Crushing Blow does 25% to the monster's current HP, 12.5% to bosses. Um, on ranged attacks, it's 12.5% to uh, monster's current HP, and it's 6.25% uh, uh, versus uh, bosses. So a little bit less on the Crushing Blow, but it's still very effective. Um, even though it's on a ranged attack, it's still very effective to have Crushing Blow on the ranged attacks. Um, the bonus to strength, though, for the Rogue Mercenary, I think is really what comes in clutch here. Uh, because it has the 35 bonus to strength and the two sockets, I could easily see taking this, putting it on a Rogue Mercenary, giving her two 15% IAS jewels, maybe with some other effects, maybe not 1540s, but just some 15% IAS jewels with something else on them. Uh, throw those in the helmet, uh, give her the 30% increased attack speed so she can attack really fast, uh, give her perhaps a, uh, a treachery of fortitude or maybe a duress if you want to beef up her crushing blow even further, and, uh, and really just let her wail away on the targets. Um, the knockback combined with the um, the crushing blow and whatever other equipment you manage to muster for her will probably be really, really effective. And, uh, and I could totally see using this on an Amazon as well, a boson. Um, I could totally see putting this on a, uh, a like a strafe, a multi-shot, uh, maybe a guided arrows on, uh, specifically for Ubers. A guided arrows on sounds kind of interesting because you get the knockback, you get the crushing blow, and you get the bonus to strength. Um, and uh, and obviously you'd want to put some uh, some nice jewels in there if you were going to use this uh, specifically to kill Ubers with. Uh, it doesn't have any resistances on it, and that's very a very big downside. Um, defensively, it's not really the greatest item. Like uh, I mean, I guess you could say knockback is a defensive ability, but defensively, it's just not really that great. And you know, granted, you can put two um runes in there if you wanted to to boost the, the uh, resistances, or you could put two bur runes in there to give you physical damage reduction. Or, you know, you could put um, a lot of different things in there to beef up the defenses of this. But at the end of the day, there's uh, there's not like a super large number of things that you can do to beef up something that has pretty much no defensive mechanics on it whatsoever. Like the more I think about this helmet, the more I think about the fact that, um, that you could put two 15% IAS, 15 all resistances jewels in this. And you would have a really nice 30% increased attack speed with 30 all res. Uh, that wouldn't be an absolutely terrible choice. Um, 
I mean, you could utilize this on a lot of different characters, um, characters that really would like knockback. I was actually thinking specifically about my Blade Fury Assassin. So my Blade Fury Assassin builds Crushing Blow. She builds um, knockback, and uh, the plus 35 to strength would certainly be useful on her to uh, to reduce her strength requirements. And um, and I could totally see using this on her with, uh, with two 40% um, ED jewels in it. She doesn't need the specifically the 15% IAS, uh, so if I could find 40% ED jewels would have any other effect that might be uh, marginally useful, um, I would be rocking 80% uh, increased damage, along with the uh, the knockback and the strength bonus, as well as the bonus to crushing blow. Um, could be very interesting, especially since I'm kind of struggling for a way to maintain my knockback on the Blade Fury Assassin. And I really would like to keep the knockback on the Blade Fury Assassin. Uh, I've actually resorted to using um, crafted gloves specifically for the knockback. But um, I think that could actually come in handy uh, on that. Uh, on that. And not only that, but uh, but if it applies during uh, Blade Shield and things like that, it could be uh, it could be very interesting. Hmm. It's I, it's always a head scratcher when you have these items that have the multiple sockets in them, and uh, and as you can see by my posture, I'm I'm just uh, you know I'm just stroking my beard and I'm thinking about the various things that you could do with this particular item. I'd love to hear what you guys think uh, about this particular item. What 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 purposes would you use a uh, a two socketed uh, thirty five strength giant skull? Would you use it to uh, to get early access to an insight? Colossus Volge? Uh, would you use it on a uh, an Act 1 Rogue Mercenary? Um, could you use it on a Blade Fury Assassin? Uh, it would make a really nice Boson uh, circle, uh, helmet, I feel like. And, uh, you know, it's not, it doesn't have any plus to skills, which is unfortunate. It doesn't have anything like Amplify Damage or anything like that on it. But I do feel like it's got enough on it that if I found one, specifically, like, maybe I was doing a solo cell found or something like that. If I found one, I'd totally put this on my mercenary, and if I was an Amazon, I'd totally rock it myself. And that's uh, that's kind of really what it what it all boils down to is that the giant skull is really just a very nice helmet, and um, it does have some stiff opposition. Um, you know, things like Andariel's visage, um, or for instance, uh, G face, are definitely stiff oppositions to the giant skull. You know, but if you had access to an Endaril's Visage, you'd probably be using it. And if you had access to AG Face, you'd probably be using it. But maybe we're in a situation where we don't have access to a G Face. And we also have the knockback on here, which is very I think a very important consideration for this piece of equipment. Because it allows you to um not have to build knockback on something else. Alright, so let's take a look and see where we can find this item if we wanted to pick one up. And uh, let's go over to Silo's pen, and we're going to pretend we have 150% magic find, players one, and we're going to take a look at bosses. So, uh, giant skull. So, relatively um, low list, low small list here. Um, looks like we've got Bale, Nilothak, and Diablo. Um, and it looks like Bale is really our best shot there at 1 in 2,716. Uh, the quest Bale is 1 in 1,799, but of course you only get one of those. And uh, even Diablo has a pretty terrible chance at 1 in a 21,938. So uh, so farming Diablo in hell, probably not a good idea. The uh, Fetid Defilers and things like that in Worldstone Keep also have a chance to drop it. But these guys are a little rare, and um, the chance of them dropping it is really high. As you can see, 1 in, what is that, 2,136,873? It's, it's a little much. It's like, uh, it's like buying a lotto ticket. Uh, let's take a look at the super uniques real quick, and uh, a relatively small list again. So we've got Neolithic, Frozenstein, Pindle, Snapchip, Shatter, Thresh Socket, Shark Tooth Slayer, Doc Farron. Uh, so Doc Farron can drop it. That's a relatively easy farm. Um, so we've got Thresh Socket and Doc Farron, as well as Pindle. Those are all really easy farms. So if you were specifically looking for this, you could potentially uh, farm a Doc Farron, uh, Pindle Skin, and Thresh Socket relatively quickly because they're all in kind of like the same area. Uh, that would be a decent uh, farm. And then, of course, all the monsters in Throne of Destruction uh, can potentially drop it. 
um, as well as a couple of the monsters in uh, Chaos Sanctuary, so the Super Uniques in Chaos Sanctuary. And uh, Eldritch has a chance of dropping it in as well. Interesting. Uh, so Eldritch and Shank, both really crappy chances, but still a chance nonetheless. So you could run uh, you could run that in a little trio. You could just go Shank... Uh, sorry, you could go uh, Doc Farron, Shank, Eldritch, Thresh Socket. That's four super uniques in a row. Go back to town, kill Pindle, leave, repeat. So, you know, you have a nice little five uh, super unique little combo there. There's actually quite a large number of items that they can drop, believe it or not. And that's, uh, that's actually a pretty easy thing to do for a teleporting sorceress. So if you happen to be a sorceress, you just literally just walk right out of, uh, of, of Haragroth, teleport up to Doc Farron, kill him, teleport up to Shank, kill him, teleport up to Thresh Socket, or sorry, to, to Eldritch, kill him, and then teleport up to Thresh Socket, who's at the end of that particular zone, and kill him. And, uh, and you've got five, literally five chances there uh, when, once you uh, throw in Pindle Skin, who of course is really easy to get to. Uh, not bad. Anyway, as always, um, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos. Uh, even when we're talking about a skull which seems to be outclassed by most other helmets around its tier. And uh, as always, keep watching. <laughs>